This video will show you how to use the new Logging in Michigan mobile app. I will explain this app and how it works, how to install it, tell you what it is used for, and then do a demonstration of how it's used. Uh, the purpose of this app, well, it was it was created by the Michigan Forest Products Council as part of their effort to ensure a healthy forest product supply chain. A healthy supply chain needs profitable logging businesses. The app allows you to calculate key performance indicators like profit and return on investment. And this information helps logging businesses make good decisions. This app is free. You can get it at www.michiganforestapps.com. It's provided by the Michigan Forest Products Council, and it was developed by me, Steve Bick, and my company, Northeast Forest LLC. I have been working with loggers on financial calculations for the past 30 years and have spent a lot of time figuring out these key performance indicators and how to calculate them accurately. So what does LIM do? So this app is intended to allow loggers to calculate their profit and return on investment for individual harvesting jobs, for, for individual weeks or months, or for the year. It incorporates proven throughput accounting methods that accurately track the depreciation of logging investments. And this is all spelled out in a short book I did with Jeff Benjamin called Continuous Improvement and Logging. And if you haven't seen it, you might wanna check it out. You can get a free download of that. So one of the things that often comes up in these discussions with loggers is that running on equity isn't profitable. You know, sometimes falling feels like flying, at, at least for a little while, but you could have a positive cash flow or what sure seems like one and actually be running on equity. The calculations in LIM kind of, uh, kind of help you get around that. You can't be profitable if you're running on equity, at least not with the, uh, with the, with the LIM calculations. So let's start with how to install this mobile app. It's, it's actually a mobile website, and it can be used both on a computer or, or a, a mobile phone, but it's really formatted for a phone. More people seem to be using phones for their, their work than desktop computers, particularly in the, in the logging world. So it's formatted uh, for that. And instead of going to the App Store, you can just go to the website. Once you're there, you can actually install it on your phone's home screen so that all your data is saved and that you can use this app anytime without phone service or an internet connection. So I'll show you how to do that. So it's a little bit different uh, on an iPhone uh, than it is on an Android. So on an iPhone, you'll use your share button once you've pulled up the website. And again, go to michiganforestapps.com and you'll be prompted to choose from a couple of apps. Choose the LIM app, pull up that little web page, and it'll open on whatever browser you use. On an iPhone, if you go to the share button, that small button with an arrow pointing up usually, you can look at your options and one is add to home screen. And if you click that, you'll get a prompt and you can save it. After that, there will be an icon for this home, uh, icon on your home screen for the app. It'll work just like any other app. You press it and it will call it up. Uh, the Android is similar, except you can just go right to the menu in your Chrome browser and add to home screen is one of the options. And again, once you've installed this app, you won't need any internet or phone service to use it. And it will store your information. If you want to put something in and come back and finish using it later, it will be there. So how do I use the LIM app? And I'm going to show you a series of screenshots shots from the app before I show you a live demo. So first thing you'll do is calculate overhead. Uh, you'll put some of the everyday expenses in for your business, uh, taken for the most part right from your income tax return. Then you're going to enter some 
uh, business specifications, some things that are specific to your business uh, that will be pretty straightforward. And we'll go through those. After that, you'll enter products in load value. So you'll list the types of products that you produce and then what you typically net on each load. And by net, I mean net of any trucking charges or stumpage or, or both. So we just want to know how much is it that you take away in revenue after those things. Then finally, finally you'll calculate the financial results. Uh, you'll select a time frame, a week, a month, a year, or just the specific job. How much you produce there, how long you were there, and a few other details that will then give you a profit level and return on investment. After you've done this, it will create a printer friendly, uh, a printer printer friendly report, and uh, you'll be good to go there. And I'll show you how to share that. So let's look at each of these things in turn. When you're calculating overhead, uh, you can get this information typically from your income tax return. Uh, for the most part, people do not underreport their expenses, and that's a good thing. So if you look for your return, if you're an LLC you're, or a sole proprietor, you're probably going to use Schedule C. Uh, C Corps and LLCs filing as corporation use Form 1120, and S Corps use Form 1120S. And these categories mostly follow right along here. So you'll Enter insurance, repairs and maintenance, office expenses, and there's a, a few other categories. That'll give your annual overhead. Next, we'll enter some things about the business. You're going to answer some key questions. We'll start with the value of your logging equipment on the first day of the year, and then follow that up with the value at the end of the year. So what we're getting at here is depreciation. How much of the equipment's value did you use up over the course of the year? This is calculated differently than your accountant will, will calculate depreciation. Your accountant, for the most part, is working to minimize your taxes, and that's a great thing. But we need a little bit more precise measurement if we truly want to understand the nature of your investment in the logging business. Uh, it's also going to ask for a core equipment value. That's, you know, what's left over after you've worn out that equipment and you're ready to sell it. It could be a relatively high number if you're planning on trading things in after, or say, after say, 10 or 15,000 hours of service, or it could be more of a salvage value. But whatever that number is, we need to know it, and you'll enter it there. After that, it asks, asks for the weeks of production in a year. And even though there's, there's 52 weeks in a year, realistically, you can't be set up on job sites in producing that many weeks. So it's going to ask you to select the number of weeks in a year that you're typically able to work. Uh, next, the annual overhead is is uh, carried over from the other page. That's going to be the dark blue cell, so you won't be entering anything here. Uh, then it'll ask you, what are your annual equipment payments and also annual payroll? And you've got to look closely at this. Everything you pay in payroll, including a living wage for the owner-operator, whether or not you're actually paying yourself or not. It's important to put that in there. Okay, in the third step, you're going to enter the types of products you produce by the truckload. And I've got a very simple, straightforward list here for now. Hardwood saw logs, softwood saw logs, hardwood pulpwood, softwood pulpwood. So you're going to put in the net revenue per load. So not the gross revenue necessarily, but the net revenue is going to be net of any stumpage you have paid and any trucking charges. So we just want to know the revenue you're, you're taking in there after those things are paid. Finally, we're going to come to calculating financial results. It's going to ask you to select the time frame, and you can pick from uh, a week, a um, month, a whole job, or a year. Uh, and then the production in numbers of loads that, that you achieved during that time period, you'll enter it in there, job-specific costs. What are job-specific costs? Well, cost to move to a site or to move to all the sites over the course of the year, or suppose you had some direct BMP costs like purchasing hay or gravel or hiring somebody with an excavator and that sort of thing. So you'd enter that there. Income from services, this is uh, more common in some place, places than others. But suppose, for example, the landowner paid you to do something extra while you were there, uh, you could enter that number at this point. 
Then the number of weeks planned on the job, or really the number of weeks that have elapsed, how long were you there? You would enter that number of weeks. And the next question is effort. And this, this uh, really requires a bit of explanation. So 100%, can you give more than 100% effort? Well, not really, but you can in the sense that if you are working more than you typically did. So what's an example of that? Suppose during the winter, you decided to work uh, six days a week because, you know, you got to make hay while the sun shines. So that would be if a typical week is five days and you work six days, it would be 120 percent effort. If you uh, had, say, um, period in June where you were only able to work three of your typical five days because of rain, well, then that would be a 60 percent effort. And it, it, it really triggers a different array of costs or a different way of totaling the costs and calculating these things. Once all that information is there, you will see profit and return on investment, profit or loss, it could go either way. So this is a profit for that time period over and above that living wage for the owner operator and a return on investment. And these two measurements working together, together actually tell you a lot. The profit is an absolute measure and it's good to know, but the uh, return on investment is a comparative measure. What did we get and what might we have got? So if you see the return on investment and uh, if 5.8% uh, is what I've got on this example, which is uh, positive, but not terrific, right? So uh, return on investment lets you compare years, compare weeks, compare jobs. How did I do this time as opposed to that time? And another thing you can do, and I will show you this in the live demo, is a little bit of what if scenario. You can alter production or some of these other factors and see how it would have impacted your financial results. So those are good things to know. Once you've done all this, and, and I realize this slide is a little bit busy, but once you have done all of this, you're gonna have a printer-friendly report created and the tab, uh, the tab below. So here you can, well, you could take a screenshot of it, but you could share it or save it. Uh, if you use your share button, it, it will, or use the print button, it will give you an option to send it to any printer you're connected to. More commonly, you know, you might share it. And once you hit that button, you've got an options, uh, an options uh, link that will allow you to se select something like PDF. That's a good format. So you can then send it email it to yourself, to someone else in your organization, whoever it is you want to share this information. And I don't recommend it sharing your profitability with, with people outside your business, but that, that's for you to decide. But this will just create the format and let you send it just the way you would any other item, like a photo when you send it. You can send it by text, you can send it by email, or however you want to do that. So it's time to do a live demo of this. I'll input some data and we'll look at the results. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, to do a demo, I have to use example numbers. These example numbers are uh, gleaned from past conversations with loggers. They don't mean anything. So if the numbers don't match your numbers or don't look reasonable to you, don't worry about that. What's important here is you show how the numbers go in because the math inside of the app is correct and, and it will get you to the right results. Now we're going to do a live demonstration of how to use the LIM mobile app. So if you have saved it to your home screen on your phone and are looking at it, it's going to look just like this. You'll see this LIM image. If you scroll down, you'll see in kind of an accordion style of choices. If you press the how to button, you'll see a list of things that look very much like the slides that were shown earlier giving you some detailed information about how to use the app. We'll start with overhead. So if we go there, and I, I filled in some data already, we'll go through these items one at a time. Insurance, it's looking for liability and equipment insurance, uh, but not workman's comp and things like that. That'll be included in payroll. Repairs and maintenance. So uh, again, your income tax return is where you may find many of these numbers. If you don't have a good sense of this, uh, it's been suggested that 7% of gross revenue is a good R&M number. 
office expenses, expenses related to administrative aspects of your business for larger companies with a dedicated office and staff, you'll have a bigger number here. For uh, one and two person operations, it probably will be a smaller number. Vehicle expenses, so for your work truck, I suggest that you look at the actual mileage and multiply it by a standard mileage rate. Now, on your income taxes, in many cases, the people, have, if they've had a good year, they bought a new truck and took a Section 179 deduction, which gave you all of that deduction in one year. That would be uh, misleading to use for a single year. So we're going to use actual miles times the mileage rate. Work supplies, cost of tools, related supplies, things that you keep on hand, consumables. Travel, uh, any work-related travel, you know, apart from your daily mileage, if you if you took a trip to look at some equipment in another state or if you went to an annual conference, anything like that. Utilities, phones, internet, uh, shop and office heat, if you, if you got those things, utilities-related services, not uncommon to have several thousand dollars there. And then there's the other expenses. Anything that you didn't think was accounted for anywhere else, you can put here and include. The total in the blue box is your total annual overhead that will carry over. And as a reminder in this box here, it talks about where you'll find that information on an income tax return for pass-through LLCs and sole proprietors. It's usually on a Schedule C. For C-Corps and LLCs filing as corporations, you'll use Form 1120. S-Corps use Form 1120-S. Then it asks you for business specs, and again, these are just example numbers I put in there. Don't read too much into them, but we're going to look at uh, starting value of your equipment and then the ending value, the difference between, between the two being your depreciation over the year, which is another way of represented, representing how much of your investment you have used up in production over the course of that year. Then there's a core equipment value, money you have tied up that you only get back when you eventually sell the equipment, you'll put that number in there. It asks for weeks of production in a year. I've got 36 here. You may be working more or less depending on ground conditions. Very rare to be able to work every week in the year just because of things like BMPs, road closures, you know, just the reality of soil moisture conditions mean that we work something less than uh, the full year. Annual overhead, that number has been carried over from the other page. Annual equipment payments, but then, you know, your monthly payment times 12 is your annual payment. You'll put it in there. Annual payroll. I put in 125000 here. Uh, let's say that accounts for one full-time worker and, and uh, minimal administrative staff, but more importantly, a living wage for the owner-operator. You may or may not pay yourself. Maybe you take what's left over, but we have to represent it here because you cannot make a profit until you first make a wage. Weekly fuel consumption in gallons. How many gallons of fuel do you do you use? And then your fuel price per gallon. How many gallons do you, or I'm sorry, uh, how, what is the cost per gallon? Uh, as of when I put this example together, 385 seemed like a good number. Next, it's going to ask you for products. Uh, list your products that you produce by the truckload. I've kept it simple here. Hardwood saw logs, softwood saw logs, hardwood pulpwood, and softwood pulpwood. So uh, you will enter the net revenue you get from each load. Net of stumpage, if you're paying stumpage, and trucking, if you're paying for trucking. So you'll take those two numbers out. Any of these numbers can be altered. Let's uh, Let's go to one of them and alter it a little bit. Suppose you actually get $1,010 a load for softwood saw logs. We'll put that in there. That Again, that information carries over. With everything like that in there, then you can calculate results. Important thing to note, because you've saved this to your home screen, once you put that data in there, you don't have to enter it again the next time you look at a different job or a different week or a different month you can then just alter this calculate results page. So it'll ask you first to, to select the entire time frame you wanna do. So, so I wanna look at uh, a single job. So I'll pick whole job. Production, so there's the list that you put in 
in the other section, how many loads did you produce on this job? So we'll put this, take this, put this through here. Um, Softwood pulp, let's say 20, let's say seven loads there, we altered it. Okay, job specific costs. What are job specific costs? Things related to individual jobs that are not recurring items. Uh, if you had to purchase a load of gravel in order to have access, then you'd put it there. If you had to pay to move your equipment there, you would put that number there. So whatever those things might be. Income from services, so you'd enter any payments you might receive from a landowner or mill for services, such as road work or fixing something up or doing site prep work. Uh, this doesn't come up that often, but if it does, there's your place to put it in. Number of weeks planned or spent on the job. So how many weeks did you spend there? You would enter that in. It will use your cost structure entered earlier. And then effort. And this one bears, again, a bit more explanation. 100% effort means that you work your typical week, same number of machine hours, same number of days. So if a five-day week is your typical effort, but it's winter and you worked a little harder because you're pushing because conditions are good, well, if you work Saturdays as well, then that makes 120% effort. But we'll keep it at 100 here. Uh, if if you were going to work, let's say, um, only three days a week because it rained every day in June, well, then your effort level would be 60%. It's not how hard you tried, but instead what you were constrained to working. So we'd put that in there. So I'm going to put that at 100%, and then I'll look at the results here. We had a profit here over and above expenses, including that living wage, for these four this four-week job of $1,296. This represents a 9% return on investment. So the two of these help you make decisions because you know, one, how much absolutely you made, but two, what was it relative to something else? Uh, uh, if you keep track of your ROI for each job you work on, you'll have a better record of, of when you did well and the conditions where you do well uh, and the conditions where you don't do as well. The other thing you can do while you're on this page is alter some things and see how they change it. What if it took you five weeks keeping the same level of production fixed? How does it look? Ooh, it turned red. You lost $7,000, $7,600, and a negative 42% return on investment. And this sort of thing does happen. But what if things went really well and you did it in three weeks, meaning same volume of wood to finish that job, but a quarter less expenses, hey, that's a terrific return on investment. We find that it's often a very narrow line between making money, breaking even, and losing money. So at this level, four weeks, it's a, a pretty typical return on investment. What if you only got six loads of softwood pulp in that time? That's just all that was there. I mean, that's not a big variation, right? You made less money and a 3% less return on investment. So you can alter once you have everything in here, any of the parameters and see how they impact results. Once you have these results, you're gonna go to print or save report. And what you've got is a fairly printer friendly report showing the summary here. You can uh, use the print this button at the bottom and it will call up any printers you have available, and you can send it to that printer. Another thing you might want to do, because how often do we really print these things, is save it as a PDF. And the way you do that is to hit your share button. You see all my favorite people listed there. And then uh, select PDF, done. And then you can pick who you want to send it to. And then you can send this result to anyone you want. Probably, though, because it's personal and private business financial information, you'll send it to yourself or one of your team members. So that is a look at the LIM app. Remember, this is a free app provided to you by the Michigan Forest Products Council. If you go to michiganforestapps.com, you will see LIM as one of the choices, and you can get it, edit your phone, and use it. Thanks to the Michigan Forest Products Council for making this available to everyone.